guys, welcome back. And if you're new here, welcome to my channel. Um, last night I started working on a new cover for my next book, which is going to be a design team project for Poppiness for Susan Taylor Brown's shop on Etsy. And um, I kind of went further than I intended to. <laughs> so, but I wanted to show you the process and what I'm doing. This is going to be a mixed media cover. And um, I'm right now I'm playing with layout and placement of the pieces. But let me pull some of these off and tell you what I'm using and what I've got going on here and what I've done. So here we go. The bottom piece is a piece of chipboard. This is a, uh, it's like a hundred point chipboard. So it's nice and thick. And um, I need to flatten that out before I go much further. But anyway... On the base, I've used, let's see if I can get this close enough for you guys to see. On the base, I've used a stencil. This is one of Tim Holtz's stencils. It's probably my favorite. I think it's called Flourish. It's one of the older ones. And then I've used some crackle paste here in the corners, actually kind of coming all the way through from corner to corner. Once that dried, I then went on top of the whole thing with black gesso. And that sort of evens out the texture, not the texture, but um, the surface. So you're kind of dealing with the same surface all the way through. Not So anyway, a layer of um, black gesso on top. Then I went in and used um, dry brush painting. By dry brush, I mean there's very little paint on your brush. And I've used metal inks. Let's see if you can see that. It's Prima's Art Alchemy Metalique, and it's Golden Moss. So it's a really pretty green color, and it has a metal sort of um, shimmer or sparkle to it. Then on top of that, I went in to just the raised surface. I went in and added, and this time, I, I love Metalique's um, wax, but I don't have, I wanted it to be copper, and I don't have copper. So I used Rub and Buff Spanish Copper, and that worked That worked fine. So here we go. So here's my base. So it's kind of a mix of a greens and coppers. And this will go on top of, here's this beautiful fabric that I found. You can see it's kind of a chenille. It's really soft. It's an upholstery fabric, and that'll be on the cover of the book. And then this will sit on top of it with my, my collage sort of mixed media pieces. So the next thing I've used here, this is a frame from, here's the pack. It's Tim Holtz Ideology Baseboards Frames. And these are all in greens. You get eight of them in the package. And I just selected one that, that I thought worked nicely with this cover. There's a couple of them that would have worked, but I liked the lighter one. And then I went in and used ink and just inked up some black along the side, grunged it up a little bit, put a little tiny, tiny, tiny bit of, of that wax on the outside there and, and uh, covered up the color of the baseboard around the inside frame and the outside. Next, I've got, this is a chipboard piece. You can kind of see the back of it here. You can really see it here. Um, on the part that I didn't paint. And I went in with this golden, no, not golden. Yeah, golden moss. <laughs> I went in with the golden moss paint and just painted it around the area that I'll be using. I kept this together so you can kind of see. And I'll be able to, I'm not gonna use this part, but I'll be able to use um, that at a later date. So I'm just gonna snip this off. It's gonna kind of come somewhere around here. So I'll snip there. And let's see, I want that a little higher and probably there. If I can snip it and then I'll save this for later because it's still a nice, great piece to use. Set that aside. And I'm, then I, <clears throat> excuse me. Then I used, and I'll trim that off later. And so the idea is that that chipboard piece is on the bottom this frame sets on top of it, and then all around it are going to be leaves. 
leaves, leaves everywhere, leaves, and a dragonfly. This book is going to be dragonfly themed, so, so I want a dragonfly somewhere in the front. So let me show you first what I did with the leaves. So these are all, these have all been painted black and they're all metal. They've all been painted black. And then I went in and used the copper wax very lightly on top on all of the raised surfaces. So what that gave me, here's what it started. These are from, these. this is a pack of leaves that you get from Prima. And they look like this when they first start out. And so here's one I haven't touched. Let's see if I can get that in frame. And then here's what it's gonna look like when I'm done with it. So you can see I'm kind of getting that block, black and copper in there. And then I had a couple of charms that looked more like this when I started. And now they look like this. And so on those, again, I just painted them with black gesso. And then I went over the top with the Spanish copper. All right, so these are pieces that I'm probably not gonna use. Actually, I'm gonna use him. And this was a brooch. I took the pen part off of the back, did the same thing, painted the whole thing with black gesso, went over the top with copper. But I don't, I don't think I'm gonna use this one. And here's another brooch that I had that happens to be a leaf, but I'm not gonna use it either. It's just a little too big for what I'm trying to do. Then I wanted a dragonfly on here somewhere and I had a couple to choose from. This was white and gold and I kind of played a little bit with a different kind of wax, the Lucky Emerald, um, for also from Prima for Art Alchemy. Painted it black, went in and played with a little, but I'm not, wasn't in love with that dragonfly. And then this little guy, I haven't touched. I have him, but um, I think he might be too small. So we'll save him for another use. But I had two of these. These came in a pack, two of these. Let's see if I can show it to you. It's a silver and it's got the, the rings up at the top. So I snipped the rings off, filed it down so it's smooth, painted the whole thing black, then went over it with um, the paint golden moss and then I went over that with the lucky emerald and then just on his body I used a tiny bit of the of the, the uh, Spanish copper so it gives this let's see if I can catch the light it gives this sort of monochromatic two-tone there look to the dragonfly so it makes them pop out a little bit more than the rest of the colors on here and I've decided as I was playing, I've decided that I wanted two of them. So before I go any further, the first thing I'm gonna do is show you how I work on this. Then once, since I'm painting um, gesso and, and wax on top of metal, I don't wanna take the chance of them rubbing off. So what I'll do once I'm done with this piece, before it gets affixed to the book, is I will spray this with a sealant. Um, I prefer a matte sealant so it doesn't add unnecessary sort of shine and takes everything to the same level. Okay, so here we go. Metal piece. I've got a pair of, uh, I don't know, this is a jewelry plier and it's got a cutter here on the side. So I'm just gonna come in here and snip that off. And it takes a little bit of muscles there we go. And now he's gone. And I'm going to do the same thing here. And those are off. So now I've got, if you touch this, there's kind of just a little bit of a rough spot. And I don't have uh, sanding paper up here. So I'm going to use, this is a, um, this is a distress, a paper distress tool. I've had it forever. I don't even know if they still sell it, but it's from Prima. Great piece. Um, and it, it's, it's got sanders, a smooth and a fine. So I'm just gonna kind of come in here and just rub that metal on metal, just to get rid of that little sharp edge, just cause I don't want, I don't want the cover to have any sharp metal edges. And there you go. It doesn't take much. This one actually doesn't have much. I got that cut clean. Sanding paper would work. You don't have to use, you know, 
these metals aren't really hard, these jewelry pieces, so it doesn't take much. And so there we go. Now he's smooth. Next, I'm going to paint the whole thing with, um, let's get some of this out of my way here. I'm going to paint the whole thing with black gesso. And this is just, um, this is a brand I think that Michael's carries. It's actually almost empty. It's uh, just the, their Liquitex black gesso. I'm going to throw a little bit here on the side. And got a brush. I'm going to grab hold of him with this down here at the bottom with this piece. And I usually, when I'm doing this, I usually will go ahead and do both the front and the back. And the reason is, is that not knowing exactly how it's going to sit on the book, you might be able to see a little bit of the up underside. And so I like to just go ahead and get it all painted. So that's why I use something to clip hold of and just blob that gesso kind of all over the place. Then once this side dries, I will go back and do this end piece here and re rehit any spots that I that I miss, okay? So, that's that. Simple as that. I'm just going to let that sit for a second while it dries. Okay. Now I'm going to play with the arrangement. So I'm going to pull all of this off. I kind of have an idea of what I want. My idea is that this is sort of a, um, a tree almost like bursting and the dragonflies are flying around, sort of. <laughs> I don't know if it really works that way, but. So like I said, I've got this chipboard piece that I wanna put down here on the bottom and then I wanna put this piece on top of that. And I want this piece to be in the center side by side to side. And I want this flourish here to kind of come out from underneath it. And then we'll trim this off at the end. So this is ready to glue. I'm going to glue this down with glossy accents. Uh, no, actually that's chipboard. So let's just glue this down with um, art glitter glue. Because I'm taking, I've got paper chipboard that's going onto the top of chipboard. Let's see if that's, I don't know if that's, so, and I want to get the whole surface covered with glue because I want a nice, I don't want it to just be partially covered. I want it to be on here good, solid. Um, and then when I get to, when I get to the metal pieces, I'll use a different glue. I will probably use, um, uh, what will I use? I will probably use matte medium. It dries clear and it has a nice adhesion. So we're just kind of getting, getting all of these little parts and pieces covered. It's hard to do because it's pretty skinny, which is why the art glitter glue works so well, because I can get a nice thin line here on the glue. So here we go. I know this is exciting, right? You're watching me glue. I will try to hurry without being sloppy. All right. Now, I can remember, I have a little indent here that I accidentally put in here because I was playing with this while it was still wet. And so I kind of know where I want my corner to be. <laughs> so, I also know that this piece needs to come down just a little, I think. There we go. I've got a little hanging off the edge, which I want because that allows me to trim it up evenly. And I'm just gonna press down on this until it sticks. And the surface underneath it is a little uneven so that's partly why I want to try to get a nice, oops, I've got some glue on here. It dries clear. 
thank goodness. All right, I'm just gonna kind of hold this down. Bear with me for a second. Till it, till it, I can tell that it's not gonna move anymore. And then later, because I've got such a nice fine tip, I can always kind of come back up underneath if there's any loose pieces when I'm done with the piece. Okay, I think that did it. All right, there she is. And now I'm going to put this little guy on. And I wanna come down. I wanna get, actually I probably should, yeah. I wanna get these corners up on, on, on top of this piece so this whole thing is raised. I don't want part of it up here and then a corner not because then I'll be lopsided. So I want to, I wanna catch this piece here on this corner and get it centered this way. And then I've got my pieces. This frame then lays flat. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> I hope. And I wanna get it as centered as I can. It doesn't have to be perfect right now. Um, I'm a little, I'm a little crooked. So let's come over this way a little bit and see if that does it. Is that closer? I don't know. Yeah. It's still not straight. It's definitely closer. Okay, well, that's about the where I want that. All right, what I wanna do, oh, pardon me, things are falling over here. What I want to do is use, um, I want to use a matte medium on this. So let me grab that real quick. Okay. This is matte gel. Sorry, I didn't. Also Liquitex, so also from Michael's. That's their, I believe that's their house brand. Matte gel um, is awesome because it is, it dries clear, it's a glue, and it, it, its adhesion is just phenomenal. You can use this on all sorts of dimensional things, and it is going to give you confident stickingness. So I'm just gonna blob this on. I'm putting extra on here because I've got, remember I've got a little space where this is raised up. And so if I have a little bit of extra thickness here, that'll adhere better to the board. Hope that makes sense. And I'm just gonna kind of blob it on here. And it dries, oh, I think I said that it dries clear, so. There we go. All right, get that out of my way for a second. Make sure I don't have any globs on the side of my frame. And I'm gonna try to use my ruler here to get this lined up nicely before I smush her down. Um, okay, that's a 16th inch shy of an inch. One is also, nope, let's come over a little bit more. Okay. All right, that's pretty good. Okay, now I wanna make sure it's straight. I think that'll do it. And I'm just gonna hold this down for a bit while that kind of attaches. Uh, as a matter of fact, I think what I'll do is I'll clamp this down and let it get nice and dry before I continue on to the next step. So I'll be back. Okay, I'm back. I did a little laundry and saw a squirrel, made a cup of coffee, saw a squirrel, 
reheated the coffee and now I think we are in good shape. And now I've got these wonderful little dents where my clips were. Hopefully that'll kind of smooth out, but if not, it'll just add some grunge to there. And by squirrel, by the way, I don't mean that literally, I mean it figuratively. Does anybody else do that where you're like in the middle of something and you just sort of get totally distracted and go off into never, never land? Okay. I do believe we are good. Just want to check, you know, chipboard is paper and paper with moisture um, warps. And so as you're working on something like this, even though it's a nice thick chipboard, it will kind of bend up. And so constantly I'm kind of just working it. And then before I put it on the front of the book, I will probably, um, there we go. I will probably put it under some, some good weight for a few minutes. A few, by minutes, I mean days. Okay. Although that's pretty flat. Okay, that's on there. And I cut, I trimmed this off here. And, um, and so eventually I will come in and, and add some black to these little pieces where they've been cut on the chipboard. But that's not something that has to be done right away. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's working out. Ed's grunge. Okay, so then I got this little guy here, and I need another coat of, I need another coat of um, black gesso. I'm just going to get that piece that was held up. And I'm going to get black gesso all over my fingers. Luckily it comes right off. And then just get another coat on that guy. And there we go. We'll set him back down to dry. Um, and wipe the gesso off. Good enough anyway. Okay. Now I want to start playing with these leaves. Now I know that I wanted to but this guy kind of coming out here like that. So I'm going to, let's see, and then my, no, no, maybe a little more down this way. Because I know I want him here. There we go. I like that. Yep. Okay. And I want to come from the from the surface up and kind of over and out the frame, if that makes sense. And for the metal pieces, um, I could use the matte gel medium, but they're they're pretty flat on the back, and so I'm going to go ahead and use glossy accents. Glossy accents is wonderful for adhering metal to just about anything. And whoops, let's get the get that lid on there. Yeah, whoops, I waited. Uh, that's what happens when you see squirrels. Now I can't get it back in there. So I <laughs> forgot to put the pin back in my, um, my art glitter glue. And now I believe I've got a little clump here. In the, there we go. Oi. Okay, uh, this needs a little bit of help here. And we'll open that up. Make sure you see if I got it opened up. Yep, okay. All right, I got a mess. Okay. So, it's okay if I get a little bit of oozing. Um, with the gloss coming out, that's not gonna bother me because when I spray it, it'll kind of take that gloss away, but I would rather not. So I'm not going all the way to the edge. Um, going pretty close, but not all the way. And then when I smoosh it down, that will probably, um, let's see if 
I can get that back under there. I'm gonna hide that circle piece. And I wanna make sure I've got enough room for my guy here. Perfect. All right, so I'm gonna smash this down. And there's a, I did get a little bit there. Uh, let's see somewhere I got it here. Let's kind of dab that up. There we go. <clears throat> Smush that down. And I've kind of got, speaking of squirrels, one of the dogs is growling at one. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear her or not. <laughs> I'm going to clip that just for a second. This little piece right here. One, oh, that's not going to be long enough. No, I'm not going to clip it just for a second. I'm just going to hold it for a second. That little piece just doesn't want to lie flat. So we'll wait. Wait until it adheres. Okay, I'm back again. Um, I have gotten all of my leaves glued down and they're dry. So dry enough anyway, and we're in good shape. And so I started to play with some micro beads. I've had these forever. I don't even know if they're still available. Um, again, Prima art ingredients, micro beads and copper. So that's what the package looks like. Am I in frame? Yep. There you go. Um, and so what I do is I use some um, matte gel and then, and this is messy, you guys, this is, and these little beads are just, they go everywhere, but I try to pinch <laughs> and try to get them where I want them. And then I kind of dump them over, you can't see me, but I'm dumping them over paper here and Let's get the lid on before I spill these. Because again, this is like, this is, uh, they're almost worse than glitter. <sighs> almost. But they have a, they give you a cool effect. So I like using them. So I just use, the, I've got the end of a paper clip here that I've just bent open. And I'm just going in and I'm kind of brushing away where they fell where I don't want them. Uh, just kind of pushing them where I want them. And then I just leave that alone and that will dry um, and see, like here's a loose guy here. Once I feel like they've all, here's another one. Once I feel like they've all dried, I'll come in and do a good hard tap on the back, um, flip it over and just really kind of get it tapped so that any that are loose running around in there will fall out. All right, there's that. I've also been playing with so I'm pretty sure I want, I want my little guy here. And here's my other guy. Here in just a second, I'm going to color him the same way. I've been playing with where he goes. Um, and I have these leaf lace pieces. I think I like the idea of adding to this somehow. And then when I put this board on the book cover, I'll kind of bring this guy down and out, sort of extending, extending the canvas, if you will. I thought maybe he might look kind of cool there. Um, I don't know if I'm even in camera. Am I? Yeah, okay, sort of. I'm trying to. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm thinking along those lines. And then I would use some more of this, these leaves somewhere on the book cover. So let me give you an idea. I've started, um, I've started covering the book. So let's see, so it's not completely done yet, um, but we're looking at something like this, something like this. All right, clearly I'm not. <laughs> Flip one up and another one comes out. All right, here you go. There, that gives you sort of an idea. And then, then I'm thinking, uh, I'm thinking that there's more lace. What do I do with that leaf? 
There it is, scrunched up under here. There's more maybe underneath too. So that those lace leaves, appliques, kind of cross, uh, go across the, in here it's a whole, this was sort of white when I got it. I've cut some apart, but it's a string. Um, and I tea dyed it. And so I've just been cutting them apart and playing with them. And I don't know, maybe that's, I don't know, that's too much, but maybe that's all you need right there. Done. We'll figure that out later, but you can at least see where my head's headed. <laughs> Does that make sense? I kind of like the idea of there maybe being a little one up here, but I don't know if I've got room. Yeah, maybe, 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 maybe we'll figure that out later. All right, so I'm playing with the playing with the lace and getting some ideas and thinking perhaps this goes here and here and we continue the leaves falling out. Yeah, we'll see. Okay, so enough of that. More to come on that. We'll figure that out later. Oops, the dragonflies are not adhered. And so it's time. I know that I want this guy here. I have all along. Haven't wavered on that one. All right, so let me show you what I did. Whoops, let me show you what I did um, to this guy. So I've got two coats of black gesso on here, and I did go ahead and kind of get it on the front. You can see probably some little shine. There's a couple little pieces. Uh, little spots, but that's fine. I'm going to cover them with wax. So the first thing I did, and and I do not have a proper a proper paintbrush. Hold on, I'll be right back. And I didn't see any squirrels that time, so so yay. Um, first thing I did was use the golden moss on the base. So, and I, I don't even need a whole lot. And I kind of, I'm dry brushing. So what that means is I'm dabbing, I <laughs> have little copper beads everywhere. I'm dabbing my paintbrush into the paint and then I'm coming over here and I'm just wiping a good portion of it off. And now I'm going to come in here and I'm just going to very lightly give this guy a brush I'm trying to grab hold of those highlights on the piece. Let me see if I can get a little closer. And I'm going to go ahead and come down his spine too, even though I'm getting ready to cover that up. Let me turn it around. Let's see if I can grab hold without getting paint all over myself. And I'm just going to do the exact same thing here. There's not a whole lot of paint on this brush. I'm not doing a solid coverage at all. Just getting in those black parts. And there you can see. So you see the difference so far? I don't know, maybe you can, maybe you can't. Um, I'm thinking it's not gonna show up. Well, this guy is done. He's got two colors. This guy just has one. I don't I don't think it's gonna show up on film. Okay, now I'm gonna take the this wax. It's called Lucky Emerald. And it is a different color wax. It is um, more of a, mm, it's more of a emerald, <laughs> of course, because it's called Lucky Emerald. And I just got a little bit of dabbed on my finger here. And I'm just gonna very lightly brush over this. And what I'm doing is I'm brushing over the, the raised portions of this little dragonfly. So just the raised portions and kind of the edges and get in there. And then I'm gonna do the same thing over here. Just raised portions. So the dry brushing that I did, um, it was a, not dry dry, but the, the light painting I did, um, kind of got down in the, on top of the black down on the base 
surface, the lower levels of, of this dragonfly. And now the wax that I'm doing is getting into the higher levels, the raised surfaces, and that's creating a two-tone effect. Very subtle, but, um, but I think it works out pretty well. Okay, now, let me get my pink closed up here. Now I'm going to run some, I'm actually gonna use, what am I gonna use? I'm going to use actually this Bronze Age. It's another wax on the just, and another finger, look at my fingers. Here, we'll go, this one hasn't been touched. And I'm going to come down here, which one, which finger did I do? And I'm gonna just do his body and just get a little bit of that brown bronze on his body. All right, and now if you notice, <laughs> I kind of touched his wings and I want to I want to go back and get rid of that. So, I'm going to <laughs> back and forth, back and forth. Which finger is green? This one. I'm going to come back in here and hit those green ones without trying anyway to not touch the body too much. And I could probably use a small paintbrush, but um, I like using my finger. Okay, so there we go. They look very close to the same, I think. One might have a little bit more emerald wax and one has a little bit more golden gloss, gloss no, golden moss <laughs> paint, but that's okay. Um, so now I just have to figure out where this guy's gonna go. And I have no idea. I don't want it, I don't, don't, don't wanna do that. I kinda don't wanna do that, cause then that out, that weighs, anyway, I kinda am thinking my original idea of having him down here was probably my best bet. It's just a matter of deciding whether or not I want the leaves on there. And I think I do, I think I like the idea of lightening this up a little bit. It's pretty dark. I didn't necessarily intend for it to be, but um, but yeah, that's why I put the beads on there because they're um, they're brighter. They're still copper, but they're brighter. And so I think that helps kind of brighten up the piece overall. I don't know, I'm probably crazy and have no idea what I'm thinking of talking about. I know I have no idea what I'm talking about. So I'm going to play some more, glue my, my uh, dragonflies down. I might think I, did I call them butterflies before? I'm sorry, they're dragonflies. Glue the dragonflies down and let all of this just sit overnight and just really get a good, good drying on it. And, um, and then I'll come back and work on putting them on the cover. So I will do that in a part two. This has just been part one, and I know I went kind of fast, and I did a lot off camera. I apologize. It's just, um, it's a lot easier. To, this is extremely time-consuming in that there's a lot of drying time. So you kind of put a layer on, let it dry. Then you come back and you do another layer, and you let it dry. And so, um, so it's a lot easier for me to just do some of it off camera a little bit. So I do apologize for that, but I hope I've given you enough so that you can see where I'm headed with this, some of the techniques that I but use. There is nothing, nothing complicated here going on. It's all very simple techniques. So next time I will give you some more information and I'll tell you a little bit about um, the next kit that I'm going to, actually kits, that I'm going to use inside of this little dragonfly journal. So until then, thank you for watching and um, more to come. Bye. <laughs>